come as you are. God will take your broken pieces and he will put them back together again. Just come as you are. You don't have to clean yourself up. You don't have to put a new suit on. You don't have to put a new dress on. Come just as you are and allow the Lord to fix you. Allow him to mend you. Just as you are. Because without the Holy Spirit, you can't do it on your own. You can try and try, but you can't do it without the Holy Spirit helping you. Let him come, he says. Come as you are. God will take those broken pieces, and he'll continue to just put them all back together again. Just like he did, uh, like the fairy tale says with Humpty Dumpty. He fell off the wall, and all the king's men, horses and men, they couldn't put him back together again. But if he'd have called upon the name of the Lord, he would have been able to put him back together again. Amen? He'll take those, that broken heart. He'll take that wounded spirit. He'll take that troubled mind. He'll take that lost soul. And he will make you whole if, for, if you just accept him as your Lord and Savior. There's no condemnation if you accept Christ in your life. That, in other words, he's not going to punish you for your past sins. Jesus died on the cross to save us from our sins, both past and, and future. Whatever we're, we may sin in the future is covered under the blood. That's why we needed Jesus. That's why we need the blood of Christ. This is the grace of God. This is the mercy of God. Romans 9, 10, 9, and 10 says that if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's part of what we went through with baptism today. Raven confessed the Lord as our, God as our Lord and Savior, and, and she accepted him in his, her life, and she was raised from dead to life. In other words, she died in Christ and rose again with newness of life as a new creature in Christ Jesus. The Lord Jesus will not... Be a respecter of any person. See, it doesn't matter who you are that comes to him. He just wants you to come. That, again, is an act of mercy. And in so many other ways, he shows mercy towards me and towards you. Paul says, by the mercies of God and all that he has done for us each and every day of our lives, both past and present, we should present our bodies a living sacrifice. He is not a God of the dead. He's a God of the living. Present your body a living sacrifice. He's not talking about beauty queen's body or a weightlifter's body. So many times we look through the magazines and things, and, and, and we see all the muscles, and, the, and, and we see the slim figures and the, the bikinis and all that, and, and we try to mimic that stuff. We try to be like them because we think that's, that's what's going on. But you know what? Those bodies are enhanced and in and uh, airbrushed and all that stuff in that magazine. Them people in them books don't even really look like they look in the book. So it, it's a false perception of who you want to be trying to look like them. See, it doesn't matter if you're overweight or you're underweight. It doesn't matter if you're black or if you're white. It doesn't matter if you have big hips or big lips. Our body is only made perfect in Christ Jesus. It's not about what we look like on the outside. It's about what we are on the inside. The beauty of Christ is not in his looks. It's in his love. Beauty is internal, not external. In him we live and we move and we have our being. It's about submission to God. If you submit to God and resist the devil, he will flee from you. Romans 6 and 12 says, this, Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments unto righteousness. We should be instruments unto righteousness, instruments of mercy, instruments of peace. I don't know, some of you may remember years ago, Marvin Gaye wrote a song a few years back. It went, mercy, mercy me. Things aren't what they used to be. Now, I, 
thank God that things aren't like they used to be in my life. I thank God that I'm not like I used to be. Amen? I thank God that he has made that change in me. I'm not what I used to be. I, 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 I thank him for that wonderful change that's come over me. And, and it's not that I was bad before. I was just lost. I didn't know what direction to go. I had no direction and no purpose. I was just going through life in motion, going through the motions, until I had a plan of salvation in my, in my hands. It was the master's plan, being born again, being born into the family of Christ, allowing him to mold me and shape me to be fit for the master's use. He put me on that part as well. He broke me, and he, he begins to mold me and, and shape me into what he would have me to be. Not what I would have to be, what he would have me to be. He does that in our lives on a daily basis as long as we look to him, as long as we trust in him who will not leave you. He will not leave you. And sometimes you may think it's taking such a long time for, for things to happen in your life. But see, God is putting us through that process for a reason. We have to just trust in him and put our hands in his hands and know that he knows what's best for us. We, we, we see things with the physical eye. We don't know what's going on down the road, but God does. And he is using us to his glory. Sometimes you just have to go through. If you never had a problem, how would you know that Jesus could solve it? So we have to be fit for the master's use, to where I can be a living witness for the Lord, where I can offer up the sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of my lips giving thanks. Until his, into his name. I can say thank you, Jesus, for all you do. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do. Thank you, God, for what you've done in my past. Thank you, God, for everything that's going on in my life. Be it good or bad, I can say thank you, Lord. I can give you praise while I'm going through because I know you're going to bring me out on the other side better than I was in the past. I say thank you for that, Lord. Hallelujah. A living witness. Praise the Lord. He is worthy. My God is worthy. He is worthy of all of our praise. Somebody say worthy. Worthy, worthy of all our praise. Worthy. So praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noonday. Praise him in the evening. Praise him all day long. Hallelujah. Thank God you can lift up your holy hands unto the Lord and say thank you, Jesus. Praise God for whom all blessings flow. My Bible tells me to let all things that have breath praise ye the Lord. Because we have come alive from the dead. He came that we would have life and have it more abundantly. You know, I, I just got back from a trip to State College. I went to visit someone who graduated yesterday. Got back late last night. I didn't feel like getting out of bed this morning. I didn't feel like putting on my clothes and, 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 and getting ready to come out. But you know what? When I thought about it, I said, God, he blessed me the whole way on that trip through the rain and the darkness and everything that we was going through. He put his hedge of protection around me. He got us back home safely. He watched over us while we were there. What right do I have to sit, sit in the bed and, and feel sorry because I'm a little bit tired? And you know what? When I come out to the house of God, he refreshed me. I'm not tired anymore. That's just how good a God that we have. You have to give that sacrifice of praise unto God. He wants our praise. He wants to bless us. But we got to make that first step and let him know that we love him and we appreciate him. And it doesn't matter what we're going through because I know that God is going to be there for me. That's what he wants from us. He is worthy of all of our praise. He is not a God of the dead. And we should not come into the house of God as if we were dead, as if we don't have a praise, as if we don't have anything to be thankful for. We should come in here already prayed up, expecting the Lord to bless us. Come with expectations. And then he will bless you. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You got to say something. 
You got to tell somebody of his goodness, of how he brought you through. You got to let somebody know that I'm a living witness for the Lord. I know what he's did for me, and he'll do the same for you. A living sacrifice. We were bought with a price. So it's not I that lives, but he that lives in me. He said, be ye holy as I am holy. Holiness is being separated from the world and dedicated to God. That's what holiness is. That's what is acceptable unto God. For it is our reasonable service. It's the least that we could do after all that he's done for us. So don't get caught up in the things of this world. And, and don't get caught up in, in, in the, the lie that the devil's trying to tell you. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. Our minds have to be restored. It have to be renewed. It has to be reprogrammed. They have to be changed to conform to the mind of Christ. That's part of what we come out to revival for, to be renewed, to be restored, to be reprogrammed. And don't allow the enemy to just to continue to beat up on you every day of your life. We give the devil too much credit. Sometimes it's just us yielding to him. We're not to yield to temptation. We're to yield to God. So when, we, when the devil overtakes us or over, we're overcome with the devil, it's our own fault. Because we should look to God for our help, for our strength. If your thinking is wrong, then your believing is going to be wrong. Let me say that again. If your thinking is wrong, then your believing is going to be wrong. If you think that God is satisfied with you just the way you are right now, if you think you are all right and your life can't get any better, then you're wrong. And what you believe is wrong. Because we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have issues in our lives and, and things and areas in our lives that we need to be improved. And we need to improve in our life. No one has arrived. No one in this room has arrived to where they don't need the Lord. They don't need the help from God. Everybody has something going on in their life that they need a closer walk with the Lord about. And including me. That's from the pulpit to the back door. And I'll admit it. I have issues. I have things that I need to improve upon, but I'm going to ask God to continue to work on me. I know he's not done with me yet. Amen? We are all in this thing called the flesh. We have to keep that flesh under subjection. Once we allow God to, to work on us, then we'll be able to grow into that man or that, that woman of God that he would have us to be. Don't compromise with your salvation. Don't get stagnant where you're at right now and, and, and get lazy. A lot of us just get lazy on God. He wants you to make a deeper commitment to him, a deeper commitment to him, to where you can say, I give myself away. I give myself away, Lord, so you can use me. Lord, I know that I haven't been everything that you would have me to be. I, I know that I don't read my Bible like I should on a regular basis and study your word. I, and, and, and I know I make excuses a lot of times for, for things that, that, that I know I should be attending or things I should be doing, uh, like coming out to Bible study or, or Sunday school or, or afternoon services or revival. I, I know I make a lot of excuses all the time, Lord. And, 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 and you know, Lord, I'm, I'm just too busy. You know, I, I, don't just, I just don't have time. I, I would like to have a deeper commitment to you, Lord, but I, I, I just don't have the time. You, 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 know, you know I work all week. You know how hard it is for me. I'm tired. I'm too busy doing things for myself. I don't have time for you. You know how it is, Lord. You know my heart. You, you, 